You know, whenever we talk about breast cancer, we here at KSAT and probably many of you at home think of our own Leslie Mouton. She publicly fought her battle, sharing the most intimate moments with all of us. Let's talk about that time in your life, Leslie. All right. So Don't it's been, do it. You're going to cry. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. It's been 19 years. You guys, you, we've known each other this whole time. Mm -hmm. It's been 19 years now. Are you okay now? What's and, and how did you find it? So far, so good, which uh, how I found it is a little problem with one of the stories we did okay. about self-exams. I All don't right. agree with that whole thing. It's not important. I was 35 years old, no history in my family, and I did my self-exams every month. And I found this little bitty pebble, just so small, right above my left nipple. And I was like, what, what is this that can't possibly be? Sure enough, it turned out to be cancer, an aggressive form of cancer, infiltrated, infiltrated ductal carcinoma. Had I not been doing my self-exams, it would have been five years before my scheduled mammogram. Their philosophy is it just stresses people out to do it once a month, and a once a year check with your doctors enough. I don't personally agree. I think everyone should do their self-exams. Okay, so tell how are you doing now. I mean, so I'm doing great. So far, so good. 19 years, every year, I would just cross my fingers and say a prayer and thank God. Um, but I got to tell you, when I found out I had it, first of all, I was in disbelief. I was so frightened of chemotherapy when they told me I was going to have to do it. What was that like going through your first one? What, what was going through your mind? I was scared because I didn't know. I mean, people talked about it. And cancer back then, because 19 years ago, it was still a secret. People weren't, they weren't open about it. People didn't talk about it. People covered up their heads and they didn't walk around bald back then. I knew my hair was going to fall out and it scared me to death. It's, I thought this could ruin my career. This could change everything about, and it wasn't even about dying of cancer. It was really about the cancer making my hair fall out, looking so ugh, in public. Well, that was a big fear and you overcame that fear in a very, very public way. And in the process, Les, you, you wound up help, helping so many people. Take us back to when it fell out and when you decided to throw a party. I know, threw a party for it. It was two weeks to the day after my first chemo treatment. They call it the red devil. And they told me, your hair is going to fall out. You need to accept it. And sure enough, got up in the shower. It just was coming out in clumps. I had decided two things. First of all, if it was going to come out, it needed to come out on my terms. I wasn't just going to watch it fall out every day. So I got my family and friends together and said, let's celebrate the fact that it's working. Because if my hair's falling out, hopefully it's doing what else it's supposed to do, killing the cancer cells. And my daughter, who's about to graduate from college, who's only two years old, there you see her there. Not only did I shave my head, but my uh, husband Tony shaved his, and our friend Cowboy also did. But I wanted it to be a positive experience for her because that's kind of traumatic to have a bald mom all of a sudden, right? Right. So we made it a party, and everyone tied a little pink ribbon in my hair and cut one off. We called them memory locks to mark the moment. Then my good friend and hairdresser, Becky, showed up, and she cut it really, really short, showed me what it would look like coming back, and then we just shaved it off. It's surreal to see this video. It seems like it was just yesterday. Why did you decide to make the ultimate statement and anchor a newscast bald? Because of the fear I had about losing my hair when I looked in the mirror and I was bald. First, I was shocked, but then the most calming thing came over me. It's like God said, this is how I see you. You are the, still the same person and you, I have so much to worry about. And I met so many women who could not come to terms with them losing their hair. I thought if I can anchor one night, one newscast, the entire thing, the night I do my story on hair loss and do it bald on television, maybe it will inspire someone out there to walk around and not worry about their bald head. And I got so much outpouring and so much support, it was overwhelming and meant so much. But one particular email I got was a viewer who said, I cannot come to terms with my hair loss. I won't even walk around my own house without my wig on because I don't want to see myself that way. She said, I watched you up there tonight and I took off my wig and I went to the mailbox and I held my bald head high. Thank you for representing me. And to this day, you still get messages from people looking for a glimmer of hope, some strength and some guidance. And to your credit, every week. You, you respond to every single one of them. So my admiration for your courage and your depth of compassion uh, shows no bounds. I love you. I love you too. And I love and, everyone out there for supporting me so much. And, and to, to be honest with you, Robin Roberts uh, uh, fought a very public battle with breast cancer herself. You and I went to Manhattan, got a chance to sit in with the Good Morning America team. Robin Roberts said, Leslie, I remember you. And I remember when you anchored bald, you were a trailblazer for all of us. It makes my heart so happy to see so many women now who walk around with just scarves on their head or bald. And it's just not as big a deal anymore. And that makes me happy. And to all of you who are battling it, lost someone, or will battle it, just know my heart goes out to you. And if I can do it, you can do it. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, darling.